question for everyone. So do you have any idea about that concept mapping? So we can call it, what is the meaning of concept mapping? Here is a question. And this is a very important one. If you will clear this concept mapping, it will be very clear for the whole topic. So I'm giving the introduction of concept mapping. So it is a great use having the concept map in explaining the general principles form out of many related ideas. It is also used to explain the mutual relationship existing between the various general principles and the relationship between various ideas, which can put forth in a lesson and the way they lead to the general principles are understood with the help of concept map. In very small few lines, I want to explain this. If you will explain this, any new topic to the students and that directly, if you will explain, the students can't understand. But if you will take with the help of concept map, it will be very easy to understand the few points of that. So here it is. What is the meaning of concept mapping? It is a diagram or we can call it as graphical tool, which can be visually represent and the relationship between concepts and ideas. Most concept maps depict ideas as boxes or circles, which are also called as nodes, which are very structurally here are clearly unconnected with lines or arrows. And that is very important part of that the concept map. It is also called as arcs. These lines are labeled with linking words. So through these lines, we can link the particular connected word and we can call it phrases, which is very helpful to explain the connection between concepts that is called as nodes. Easy to understand that. So this is the meaning of concept map. The next one. So first of all, who invented that? Each and everything in the world is going to invented by someone. So we should know about that concept map mapping, which is very important. So it is Joseph de Novak. He is the, he was the person who started using concept map. So concept mapping was developed by the professor of education, Joseph de Novak and his research team at Cornell University in the 1970s as a means of representing the emerging science knowledge of students and very helpful for all of us. It is not only for science. Actually, he started for science. But if you will take for any other subjects also, it is really very helpful because it is the base for the topic. The next one, what is the definition of concept map? According to Novak and Govin, he described that a concept map as a schematic device for representing a set of concept mapping that is meaning embedded in a framework of propositions. A very important that framework of proposition. The second one, Miller and which in 2011 studies suggest that an effective way to build conceptual understanding is to combine words with visual images. If you will add some visual images, this is the further part of that concept. The first one, it was only a wording, nodes were there. But afterwards, which he started using visual images, so it will be very clear to understand. The third one, possible that is 1968, the most important factor that has influence on learning is the previous knowledge that we have since the meaningful learning occurs when relationships are established between new and previous concepts. So here is the explanation of the first one who started, the second one, the words from this Miller, and the third definition is given by Ossible. They are interlinked, means they want to explain concept map only, but it is really very helpful for us. So some concepts are there, here it is, write down the major terms of concepts about a topic. Second, identify the most general intermediate and specific concept. Means if you are supposed to put it anything, any point, it should be interlinked. Then only it will be in the concept mapping. Begin drawing the concept map. 
now concepts are circled also we can call it nodes place the most general concepts at the top place intermediate concepts below general concepts put specific concepts on bottom draw lines between related concepts label the lines with linking words to indicate how the concepts are related and in the last revise the map so these are some points which are related with the concept mapping and we can call it steps so how to make a concept map few steps are there so i think so students you understand this so here it is components of a very important components of concept map so there are several components of concept map that make them very innovative let's go over the typical com components of a concept map so first one concepts are enclosed in boxes or we can call it circle usually then only it will be we call it yeah this is the main part of the concept map the concepts go from top to bottom in a hierarchical fashion the very important one the main part of that whom you want to explain it will always come to the top of the particular concept map and slightly we can go it down the next one the main concept these are usually in a bigger box or circle at the top of the concept map and other concepts branch down from it next one the verbs on the branches connecting concepts are called as linking words and which are very important it is also called as linking phrases which connects two main concepts which denote the relationship between the two main concepts the next one so what are the advantages of concept mapping is a very good one we should know about this so here it is the advantages and it's really very helpful for all of us not only for our students for all of us so as a teachers also concept maps help students to see the big picture and visualize relationship between each and every main point of the concept of the topic now concept maps are good for processing and storing large amounts of information a whole topic we can correlate we can reconnect with the help of concept map now the third one through links concept map present information in a dynamic manner so it will be very colorful it will be very attractive here it is the fourth one concept map help students develop meta cognitive skill that this is the very important now what is the meaning of meta cognitive a very important point which we are going to collect in the concept mapping if you will see it properly if you will visual it properly if you will concentrate it properly so you will get it whole chapter easily that is the concept maps which is very helpful for students now what are the objectives of concept map so there are several objectives for a concept map when applying in the work or in our daily studies so here is the first one what is the first and very important that is to produce thoughts conceptualizing lighting and so forth thoughts means if you will see the word you can recognize the word yeah this is the word and the meaning of that so how it is going to correlate to plan a perplexing structure that is long messages hypermedia enormous sites and so forth so many are there next one here it is to impart complex thoughts means the very important important points we can easily make in a correlate with that with the help of concept map that is the import complex thoughts the next one to help to learn by expressly incorporating new and old information it is a connecting link between the old and the new informations next one and very important to survey understanding or analyze misconceptions so this is the very important one so if you will understand the old one so easily you can recollect the new thought so that is a survey the next one it is to characterize processes and flows a very important points were there now 
I'm going to explain the examples of concept map in education. A very good one. Wow. So do you have any idea what is going on here? And what is this? Anyone? Will you please? It is a very good and easy example of concept yes, map. Ma ma may I? Yes, yes, please, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, as I can see, it, it is a white water recycle and a stage of plants in different, different uh, pattern, color. Yes. yes, thank you, thank you. The very first thing, it's a life cycle. How each and every part of plants are very helpful. First thing, roots. See here. A plant is there which is having leaves. If it is green, yes, but it needs sunlight. Why? Why we need sunlight to produce photosynthesis? And that is, if we will give water to the plant, then only they are prepared their food. They are prepared food for us also. But how come? With the help of flowers. Flowers are going to convert into fruits and that fruit is for our food. This is a simple concept map. Only with the help of a single concept map, we can easily correlate our idea. The next one. A very good one. So here it is a science. It has approach empirical, which derives models that are falsifiable by experimentation. Now, if I will correlate this science with this word experimentation. So, how come I correlate? Without experiment, I am unable to explain science. So, these things are very easily we can do it. If with the help of models also you can explain. With the help of empirical formulas you can do it. Here it is the next one. You have to investigate the main phenomena which are very observable with that are observable means if you will understand if you will explain something to students it should be properly phenomenically and observable to students now next one science has approached us theoretical it release it postulates many theories again correlated with models that are falsifiable by experimentation this is the second example the third example, a very good one. Have you got it? Food chain. See here, here is a plant, a producer, which can produce foods for each and everything on the earth. This is the only one living organism which can produce food for us. But in the presence of sunlight. And a chain is there, that is a food chain. A single one that is called as primary producers. Then, here it is a grasshopper. That is, it consumes, it leaves, it totally depends on these plants for their food. So, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer and top consumer. So, these are the consumers which are totally depends on these all. This is in a chain form. So, we can call this a food chain. And what about this? It's a decomposition. Very important part of the life, which is totally depends on the dead and decaying material. It is broken down by decompose. But after death, again, the nutrients are divided into are absorbed by the plants. And this is the third example. So, wow, a very good one. Here it is an example of whole number, a match. It's a very Good, if you will see here the place values, then ordering and comparing, that is number bonds, factors and multiples, division, multiplications, and the very important four optional operations. So these are all important one of a flow chart of, you can call it a concept map of maths. So conclusion, what do you think about that? How can we conclude about this? In conclusion, concept mapping is seen as a tool that may support learning within an appropriate teaching ecology. Such an ecological perspective may require for some a reconceptualization of the teacher's role in which uh, this is a very important one, a teacher's role. Why? Because we have to teach, we are able to 
give them learning and the changes we are going to see in, in the integrated components of effective teaching. So each and every point should be there in concept map. Then it will be very helpful for the students. So I'm really very thankful to all of you. I think so you must understand about the concept map today. So here only I'm going to stop. Uh, Anjali, thank you so much and uh, congratulations to you for conducting your seminar in systematic way. Anjali, she has started her seminar on the topic concept mapping and she has started with the introduction. Then uh, she has switched on the a bit history about the concept mapping, then the definitions. And what I like about a PPT means she has given all the steps how to prepare concept map. She also gave brief about the components of concept mapping. Then she switched on the advantages of concept mapping, objectives. She gave, I think, three, four examples she has given. And finally, she has concluded her topic. So very nicely you have conducted, Anjali. Congratulations again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Yes, now it is time to clear time, we can say. Uh, my question is to you is concept mapping is helpful for whom? Uh, for me? For, are you asking for me or any other? May no, I no. It is, it, is, it is helpful for whom? My question is. It is helpful for teachers, it is for it students is. or the parents, to whom exactly? For especially, it is very helpful for students. But uh, as my point of view, if any teacher will be there, if he or she want to read the chapter, but if you will go through the concept map, the whole chapter you will get it. If you are going to talk it about the exam, uh, science only. So whole chapter you will get it in very small view and then it is very easy to explain to students and as usual students are it is very important for students also. Okay uh, next question is suppose science teacher she is teaching any topic in the classroom okay yes, so there are different steps while teaching teacher should follow certain steps in the class in the classroom teaching right so exactly where she should use the concept mapping. Uh, in the starting of the chapter, whenever she is going to start that, there only she has to start uh, the concept map. Means so starting are... okay. okay, means for the for the introduction. Uh, no, not only introduction. First, she has to give the introduction about the chapter, and when she will start the chapter, at that time she is going to start with the help of concept mapping. Okay. I'm just passing the same questions to the to the audience. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Please try to. Yes, Tachi. Yeah, ma'am. Practical. Uh, ma'am, uh, I was like, uh, uh, like during starting, uh, like uh, suppose one topic we have introduced. Now, primary, uh, like uh, what are the primary things? Uh, primary occupation. So that time we can at the side when like we divide the board, we can note down that point, and then when we introduce the second one, again we are going to note down the the uh, second point. So automatically that low chart will be like produced no? because before introduction of that topic, I mean that will be really blank for the students to note down the topic yes. in the flow chart. Okay, okay. Next question is connected to the same. Can you use concept mapping for recapitulation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. meaning it de depends on the teacher where she can use. She can just start her actual teaching of the content with the concept mapping and simultaneously while drawing the map or while, while drawing the flow chart, she can explain the thing, right? She can also use while recapitulation the things, whatever she taught in the classroom, right? So it depends on the teacher. Okay, is it helpful for the parents? Because if the topic will be there, it is it will be in between student and the teacher. Huh? If Parents are going to take studies at home of their kids. So that at that time it will be very helpful. Yes, that, if it, yes, yes, that was I'm expecting from your side because parents yes. usually they are taking homework of their kids. And yes. uh, if they are they are familiar with this technique, that concept mapping, definitely they can use while teaching at home. Right? Yes. So yes. it is helpful for everyone, but majorly it is helpful for the students while studying. 
yes, right ma okay a uh, small correction is there yes, anjali yes uh, what are examples you have given all examples were not related to concept mapping again okay. you all you are not very clear about the what is exact difference between mind mapping and concept mapping okay so very whenever there is a diagram concept map is always goes from top to bottom and mind yes. map it always goes gradually and in mind maps we are using different images the pictures the colors etc 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 and if it is the branches at the center it is very broad and sideways it goes narrow and narrow and narrow like this okay so you should be clear about this both the concept both concepts are different and both are very interesting okay yes. so as a teacher you can use in your daily classroom teaching yes i am always yes. using yes ma'am the last i okay, think so the maths one is a mind map which i had shown which can can you can you reshare your ppt yes yes ma'am just you can just switch on the previous examples as well the acha that one yes ma'am this one this one see yes okay i will do it okay this is the second one it is the it is the concept map the proper concept map it is this one this is not a concept map yeah okay this is a concept map yeah this is perfect concept map so either yeah. you can show the main concepts with the uh, circles or with the boxes yes okay yes, and yes. see these are the investigates has approach derived by so these are the prepositions so there should be connect cover to can see connection between the main uh, theme and the sub theme or the we can say the main concept and the sub concept yes yes okay so it is very very important it always goes from top to bottom so it is okay, it this is, is all yes yeah. this is this is not mind map as well so yes. that mind map see yes. uh, switch on the next example only one mind map was there this see this is the yes. perfect example of mind map yes you can see oh. here the whole number you can see the branches the thicker branches you can see here and yes it, it is going narrow narrow and narrow you can see yes. here yes yes okay. and maximum it, it is colorful you can use images pictures for the explanation yes ma'am so this is perfect mind map and the previous example that is perfect example of concept mapping yes okay all yes. the students it is clear to you please go through whatever notes i have shared with you please go through it 